Number two is reviewing in depth using what I call the Socratic review method. So the default option that most students take is what I call the obsessive practice exam narrative, where you take exam after exam after exam, you measure your results, you're happy or sad about them, and you move on. That's, that's what I did, and that's where I started. Back when I was t- studying for this exam, back in 2005, I took an exam, and I got a 152. And that was incredibly discouraging for me because I had high hopes of getting into a top 14 law school. I'd gone to an Ivy League undergrad. I always thought I was good at tests. But the LSAT was just this one exam that I could not crack. So I was doing exam after exam after exam. And my scores stayed in the low 150s for months. And what really changed the game for me is when I started looking more deeply at my mistakes. I started analyzing them in more depth. And I pioneered what I now call the Socratic review method. I've evolved it over the years. I've innovated it. But the idea is that you're engaging in this Socratic dialogue or inquiry with yourself, where you're looking to get to the root of what gave you trouble about a problem. So taking logical reasoning, for example, what caused you to have trouble with it? What led to your mistakes? Was it an issue with the stimulus? Was it the question stem? Or was it the choices? If it was the stimulus, what about it gave you trouble? Was it the method of reasoning? Was it unfamiliar to you? Was it an issue with them using complex language or vocabulary or topics? Was it them using annoying conditional indicators like unless, except, until, or without that don't neatly fit within the sufficient indicator list or the necessary indicator list? Were they requiring lots of conditional statements to be linked together? Were they requiring that you use the contrapositive? Were they failing to include evidence and conclusion indicator words? Or were they burying the conclusion in the middle? There's lots of little things they can do that will make it tougher to parse or navigate the dense text of the stimulus. But slowing down and figuring out what unique tricks and traps you are uniquely prone to falling for can help you avoid making those same mistakes in the future. If your mistake comes from the question stem, was it unfamiliar or difficult wording to refer to a common question type? You'll see oftentimes in exams in the 50s, 60s, and up, They refer to flaw questions using unique phrases. They're not simply saying flaw. They're not simply saying vulnerable to criticism. They're breaking out their thesaurus and using less conventional ways to refer to common question types. So figuring out what's giving you trouble there can often pave the way. And finally, the answer choices. You want to look at what was tempting about the wrong answer that made you pick it and what ultimately makes it wrong and what was discouraging about the right answer that pushed you away from it that made it seem unappealing and what makes it correct in the end. This takes time. It takes a lot of time. And it's not always fun to harp and focus on your mistakes. It's much easier to just take another exam and measure yourself, score it, see your number, track it, and move on to the next exam. I would rather you do fewer exams and review them in more depth because that's how you learn from your mistakes and avoid making them again going forward. This exam is a test of pattern recognition. And part of the pattern is figuring out what those methods of reasoning are, but the patterns also extend to the tricks that LSAC uses in constructing really tempting wrong answers and really discouraging right answers. And so this process, you have to go beyond just looking at the correct answer, saying, oh, how could I have been so dumb and moving on? What you really want to do is actually write this out, articulate it, talk it out. And you could also meet with a friend or a coach or a tutor or a study buddy or a study group But talking it out with somebody or at least writing it out is a good way to force yourself to make sure that you really are getting to the root of your problems so that you can avoid making the same mistakes going forward. And students don't spend enough time on this, but I would want you to spend ideally at least three hours reviewing your results from one exam. Because if you think about it, let's say you got 15 questions wrong. You might have also had difficulty with another 10 to 15 questions, but guessing got them right. So that could be 25, 30 questions or more that you've got to review. And if you were only spending two minutes per question on 30 questions, that's one hour of review. But two minutes a question, that's barely more time than than you have on exam day itself under times conditions. And as we know, the exam is very strictly timed. So it's worth spending at least five minutes or 10 minutes reviewing a single question. And that could be writing it out, talking it out, watching a video explanation, 
reading a written explanation to really get to the root of what your problem was. And you can read or watch explanations from multiple sources. Obviously, I have my written explanations. I have my video explanations, but there are also other ones out there too. If you just Google the question, you may get new insights into how other people are explaining things. I wouldn't use them as a crutch either though. I would start by looking at your own thought process first and talking it out first or writing it out first and really struggling with, struggling with the question on your own. But if it would serve you to look at other sources or my sources, by all means, go ahead. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.